So in this example, again, I think the match uh, is a pretty nice addition because this is really this is really handy, and it would be much more verbose if you wanted to get the same level of robustness. Hello and welcome to Big Python. In this episode, we're looking at a new pattern matching capabilities of Python 3.10. But first, let's have a look at what pattern matching is and what do we have in Python even today. You've probably written a code like this when you have a list or a tuple, and you can bind individual elements to variables, uh, which of course works uh, only as long as you have exactly the same number of elements, uh, because as, as soon as the uh, sequence you're trying to bind changes, then you get something like this. And if you want to handle this, you would have to have like, ask the length and have if, else, or try. Um, which isn't very convenient, and that's uh, one thing that the new Python 2.10 match uh, addresses. Uh, we also can do the same thing uh, with for, uh, again, binding to individual variables the things we're iterating over, like with dictionaries. Uh, and again, as soon as the dictionary is just a slightly bit different, the code uh, breaks and you would again have to have some if-else uh, in there. Uh, and also, uh, which is related, is the try except, because that's also pattern matching. Uh, we're matching on the type uh, of the exception here. And now with Python 3.10, we can do this, which looks a bit like uh, in C, there's a switch statement. In uh, functional languages, there's also often uh, something like this. Uh, and now we have it in Python. Uh, so we can handle different kinds uh, of input, uh, like this, it's pretty short and elegant, and it no longer breaks uh, when the shape is uh, a bit uh, different. Uh, it basically it, it falls through, so it's, it's no longer, if we have uh, something which is not handled in this or this, we can have a default case, uh, or if we didn't have it at all, then it would just do nothing. Uh, instead of raising an exception. So that's the very basic uh, of how much looks like and how it works. And now uh, let's see some more uh, real world examples of that. The first example I have here is from our previous tutorial, uh, which was event driven snake in Pygame. And this is excerpt from the game logic. Uh, it's from the snake. And this is the snake reacting to events in the game. So basically at this point, we have a list of events uh, where every event is a data class, it's an object, and the snake uh, has to iterate over it and react to each message. So in the old version, uh, we have to use is instance to see what type of message it is, uh, and then uh, do something based on that. Well, in the new version, we can use match. So it's immediately obvious that here we are switching on the, in, on the type of the message. Uh, while in the previous version, uh, with the if is instance, it's not immediately obvious that it's uh, just about the type of the message. But here it just couldn't be anything else. Also, uh, we can bind the contents of the message into its own uh, variable. Uh, while in the previous version, we always have to write message dot something. Uh, so this is a little bit uh, less verbose. So in this example, I kind of like what match does to the code. It's shorter and more clear, though it's nothing groundbreaking. Uh, let's have a look at the second example, uh, which will show some other capabilities of the match, uh, which is uh, working with dictionaries, uh, which you often have to do when you're working with JSON, uh, where you basically don't have uh, elaborate types like we had before. You have just like lists, dictionaries, and strings. Uh, so we have to traverse that. And here I've prepared a short example using GitHub API. So we're going to uh, look up commits uh, from uh, the repository of Flask, uh, the web framework, and we'll look for commits that contain the word Jinja. So what we get back is uh, JSON, and it's a dictionary where uh, the results are in the items key. So it's a list of dictionaries uh, where here is the hash of the commit. Uh, and then there is also commit, which is more information about that, which is in its own dictionary, uh, which is an author key, which is its own dictionary. Uh, when we want to process this data, we can do something like this, uh, which is iterate over it and then extract from the nested dictionaries uh, the stuff that we want. Uh, 
And we really need to be sure that the structure is exactly like this. Uh, because as soon as, uh, like, on one level, the key does not exist, or it's not a dictionary, but uh, it's a list or something, uh, then this blows up. And uh, to do this uh, robustly, it's pretty verbose in Python. While in the new Python with the match, uh, we can pretty much mock uh, what the input looks like. So we're matching on the item, where the item is uh, this dictionary. And we're basically saying, okay, so I expect that it's a dictionary where there's one key, there's something, some key which I want to bind to this variable. There's some other key which is a dictionary, and from this dictionary I care about this, and I care about this. And you get it uh, into the variables, and if there were items which did not match exactly this, then they're just skipped, and you don't have to worry about the errors. Uh, you can also do this. So you don't have to just extract the keys, but you can also have uh, like um, a condition here. So this uh, does not actually bind the name, but it will skip uh, the entries which do not uh, match this. So we cannot do this anymore. But So in this example, again, I think the match uh, is a pretty nice addition. I'd say it's probably even better than in the first example. Because this is really this is really handy, and it would be much more verbose if you wanted to get the same level of robustness uh, in this uh, kind of approach. So let's have a look at our last example. Uh, it will also be traversing data structures, but in a more functional programming like way, uh, which is where the match uh, expressions in programming languages actually originated, I guess. Uh, so it should be like the best showcase of uh, the power of this approach. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a simple uh, mathematical expression uh, and we're going to take its derivative, uh, which uh, I guess can be a bit mind-bending if you've never done this in programming uh, before, uh, but it's really not that hard. And if you ever need to do something like this, uh, you would use uh, the SymPy uh, module in Python. But here we're just uh, demonstrating the match. So we're going to use AST module, which is uh, like the Python compiler itself, uh, to like read this expression and make a tree uh, for us uh, that we can process. So uh, when Python sees something like this in your code, it thinks, oh, it's a binary operation where the left side is a constant and the right side is some variable uh, called x. Uh, so this is uh, like a tree where the multiplication is the root and it's got two children, uh, the constant 7 and the variable x. So how do we take derivatives? Well, it's time to search Wikipedia or your knowledge of calculus. Uh, but basically we have uh, some rules and some rules how to compose them together. So we're taking derivative of the expression, that is uh, this tree, uh, with respect to some variable, uh, we know, for example, that uh, when we have a constant, then it derives to zero. When we have the variable that we're deriving with respect to, then we get one. Uh, or when we have uh, the variable to some power, uh, then it derives to that power times x to a power that's one less than before. Uh, when we have a sum, then we just derive the left and right parts. And when we have a product, uh, then we take derivative of the left side times this, the other side underived, and vice versa. So this is a like rewritten Wikipedia page for the uh, derivatives. Of course, just some simple uh, simple cases. Uh, but it uh, it actually does compute something. So let's have a look what it does. And indeed, it. This is correct uh, answer, uh, even if we probably wouldn't write it like this. Uh, it's 0 times x plus 7 times 1, which is like 7. <laughs> uh, but the computer doesn't know that because it expands it uh, based on the rules uh, we gave it. So this would uh, have to be a bit uh, simplified, or it could be simplified. Uh, and again, well, how, how would we simplify it? Well, we could say that whenever you have zero times something, you just replace it with zero. When you have 
something times one, you just replace it with the something and so on. So we can use the same uh, approach to simplify this, uh, which can look like this. Uh, so uh, we have to make sure to simplify the tree like from the bottom up uh, so that uh, we can recognize all the opportunities for simplification. Uh, and when we do that, uh, we have those cases uh, I just mentioned. So like something times zero is always zero, something plus zero or something times one or something to the first power is always the something. So let's see what it, uh, what it does. And as you can see, it managed to simplify just fine. So zero times x plus seven times one becomes just seven uh, as it should. And it also can process much more uh, complicated uh, expressions uh, as long as we stay within the boundaries of what uh, rules for derivatives uh, we put in there. Uh, so we can process even something even a monster uh, like this, uh, which of course turns into a much bigger monster uh, when we take the derivative. Uh, but when it gets simplified, uh, it becomes much more manageable. So this last example is perhaps something a bit different than what you're used to in programming. But if you'd like to explore the uh, functional world and this kind of uh, equation-like uh, programming, we can now do it in Python. And I think it's a great addition to the language. Thanks for checking out this short look at Python 3.10 pattern matching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you like the video, be sure to like it here on YouTube, that helps the channel. And I'll catch you next time on Big Python.